All right, so first we're gonna disconnect the battery. Let's start with the negative side first. This is that eight millimeter wrench that we're using here. And if you have an aftermarket uh, thing, it may be different, but for the most part, eight millimeter is the stock size. And the reason we're undoing the battery is because um, we're gonna be messing with the starter and even with the car turned off, it can zap you. So you do not want uh, the battery connected at all during this procedure. Now one tool I would highly recommend for the job is a transmission jack. You're going to use this uh, multiple times. They're about $150 at Harbor Freight, which isn't really a lot of money. And um, you're going to use it to lower the transfer case and the transmission, so it's really going to come in handy. It's somewhat similar to a normal jack, but it just has a platform up here that helps you secure the whole thing because you do not want that transmission or transfer case rolling over and falling down as you're trying to remove it. And they are pretty heavy and it's hard to get under there in a good position. Um, definitely not a one man job, you need at least two people. Uh, but with a transmission jack like this, you can uh, probably do it with one person. So we're gonna go ahead and lift it a few inches into the air. The jack stands don't go up too much higher than this. And we're just putting it on the frame on both sides. And that'll just give us a little more clearance getting the transmission out. You can leave the jack here on the frame as well, as long as it's not in the way, just as an added safety precaution. Next, we're gonna take off on the drive shaft that's coming through here. There's four of these 12 millimeter, 12 point bolts. So we're taking these off with a uh, ratcheting wrench and um, you can usually break all of these free just while the wheels are on the ground, but if this top one's too hard for you to get to, you can lift the back of the truck in the air and you can move the wheels and it'll spin it to expose the next uh, bolt if you want to do it that way. But these can be on here pretty stiff. Anyway, it's just for these uh, 12 point, 12 millimeter bolts. All right, go ahead and then just pull forward if you can on the drive shaft. Sometimes these are pretty stiff. There's not a lot of play. Now we went ahead and put some liquid wrench all around this because it was uh, stuck up in there pretty good. But once you have the bolts out, you may even need to get a screwdriver in here and hit it with a hammer to separate it. But after that, uh, you should be able just to pull it uh, forward slightly and then drop it down. Now, you're gonna wanna get a catch pan because as soon as you pull the drive shaft out of uh, the transfer case here, you may lose some fluid. All right, so just pull the drive shaft straight out. There's some of the fluid. So you're just gonna have to remember as we're filling everything back up when we're done to fill the transfer case and the transmission fluid. So to remove the starter, you're gonna need a 13 millimeter socket, and it works really well to have this little quarter inch drive ratchet with a long extension, and uh, here's why. If you're looking up here, here's the oil pan of the car, here's the transmission. So the starter is coming off of the transmission right here. And so there's going to be a 13 millimeter nut here that you'll take off and then a 13 millimeter uh, bolt uh, that's right behind it. Then right here above it there's another 13 millimeter bolt and then there's another one that's pretty much in the same place but just a little higher back up in there. So the best thing to do is take the 13 millimeter extension like this and come over the starter until you get on it. So for that bolt, as you can see, we're getting this bolt off by coming all the way using that extension coming from the back. And we're gonna do the same thing on the last bolt that's way back up in here that you'll be able to fill it with your fingers. But you have to do that in order to get enough clearance like this with the wrench as you can see on that one and the one that's back there behind it. Okay, so we took off this 13 millimeter nut right here 
then you can remove the ground and then that exposes a uh, 13 millimeter another nut but it's on a stud so you have to use a deep socket to get to this one now we already went up in with our uh, with our really long extension and got the bolts in the back here. There were two of them up there. So this is a third bolt here that we're taking off and it's the only thing that's keeping the starter on. Okay, so with that last third bolt out of the way, you can just pull the starter away and just set it down in here where it's supported okay so here we are here's the transmission here we're gonna go after the shift linkage uh, first there's a little cable coming up here and we're just gonna push this line down and around to free it up next you're gonna take a 15 millimeter uh, wrench and you're gonna take this bolt off on the shift linkage Okay, we've already broken these loose, but next to it, then you have two eight millimeter bolts. So you'll take those off as well. Now you can slide the linkage off there, as well as uh, this plastic piece here. And we're just going to leave it to connected. There's a plug if you want to unplug it, but it's just going to go back on the other transmission. Then up over here, there's two more bolts that we've already broken loose. They're eight millimeter as well. And they're just a bracket that's holding this shift linkage on. Okay, so we're all disconnected there. Push on this tab right here and slide this plug off. And you'll notice this big harness that is coming through here and it's just attached by one of those Christmas tree pins. So you'll just push straight up until it comes off. So now we're loose there. Then up in here, there's another connector. Okay, so at the very top right here, there's a pin to push down on and then it will slide off. Okay, then all the way up in here following, you'll see a line that goes into the transfer case. So you'll just wiggle, pop that off. So coming from the back side of the transmission here, you'll see this white plug. And on the right hand side of it, you'll just push in on a tab and it will unplug. You couldn't see that, but uh, right there, right there where my thumb is, there was a tab just to push. And so then that just lifts straight out. Okay, so on the front of the transmission, you're gonna find these two 13 millimeter bolts, one on each side. Once you remove them, it's gonna expose our flex plate and our uh, torque converter. So what we've done now is run a breaker bar with an 18 millimeter socket that goes on the front of the crankshaft pulley. So there's the crankshaft pulley. If you want more room, you can take off some of these plastic pieces. You have to pull a whole bunch of tabs and everything off, but if you can get a wrench up in here this way, then it works perfect. So as we turn the crankshaft with this breaker bar, it's going to allow us on the transmission to expose these uh, nuts right here. And so as you take each of these off, then you'll have to turn the crankshaft to expose the next bolt that's up in there. And so as you turn it, it'll come down and then you'll be able to get to the next one. So by doing that, you can take off all of the uh, flex plate to torque converter bolts. Now my favorite tool to use for this is one of these wrenches with the adjustable heads. So this is a 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench. As you see, the head can be twisted, and that's how you can get onto this bolt. Now, as you start to loosen it, it'll 
it might turn the flywheel. So you will have to put that breaker bar here on the on the crank and hold it still as you break it loose. Also, uh, you may need to make sure that the truck is in uh, neutral so that you can turn this. Okay, so what we have is uh, on the front we're turning the crankshaft with an 18 millimeter socket. And so you can see we took off that one bolt and as we're turning it, what it's doing is it's bringing that next bolt to our view to where we can take it off. Now we don't have a ratcheting wrench up on the front so what we're doing is we're turning the uh, crankshaft as far as we can then we're taking the socket itself off and just turning it one rotation and putting it back on the wrench and that's giving us the range that we need but as you can see the next bolt will then come down to be exposed as we keep turning that crankshaft with that 18 millimeter socket on the end of it. All right, that's good. Next, we're going to drain the transfer case fluid. So you're just going to come find the drain plug and you're going to take a socket wrench here. And you're just going to put it inside of there and then loosen that going counterclockwise. Make sure you have a nice pan for it. Go ahead and catch all that. It does shoot out quite a bit. Then just follow it forward so that it doesn't leak onto the ground. All right, go ahead and replace the drain plug there. Next, we're gonna disconnect the electrical here. So you're gonna push down on this tab and then separate those two apart. Okay, so pushing down right there, then you can separate that. So now our electrical is disconnected. Next, we're going to remove the four bolts that are on the uh, drive shaft for the transfer case. And so we're going to take our really long extensions with a 12 millimeter, 12 point socket on the end. We're going to follow this other drive shaft for the four wheel drive down to the end. And there you'll find uh, those four bolts. So with the front wheels in the air, what you can do is uh, you can break these loose and then to expose the next bolt, you can just simply turn the wheel. As you turn the wheel, the next uh, bolt will come up for you to access. And if you have somebody who can help, they can sit in the truck and hold the brakes down while you break these loose. Because as you start to breaking them loose, it, it'll spin the shaft. So it helps if you have somebody who can put their foot on the brake and hold it still. Or if you have an impact, you can try that. That might be able to spin these off uh, without spinning the drive shaft. But anyway, we're going to remove uh, all four of those, just like we did on the drive shaft. Okay, so we removed all four of those bolts there on this uh, drive shaft for the transfer case. Okay, so we're leaving the drive shaft connected at the front uh, differential so we don't have to lose any fluid there. Coming back here, we've removed those four bolts. And once again, I just put a screwdriver in between here and gave it a little tap with a hammer. And that really helps. Um, so now you have the drive shaft here loose, disconnected. Okay, so as long as it's free, we can just leave it right here and we'll remove the rest of the differential. So I also went in, if you can see, I took a Sharpie and I drew a line on both parts there, on the flange and also on the drive shaft so that we can match it back up to where it came off. And that is important from, uh, for balancing 